What is up, FIFA faithful? Bear Hams here, and welcome to episode 9, what is hopefully the penultimate episode of the season. And before we get into a crucial game against our former team in Pisa, let's talk about what happened off-camera. Not an ideal start to games off-camera, as we do lose to Lecce 1-0. Out of curiosity, I am going to simulate this game against Sutarol. And after 90 minutes, we demolish them. Another game I'm going to simulate is against Cremonese. And after 90 minutes away from home, it is a draw. Longo getting on the board. With five games remaining in the season, we're looking pretty good. We do have a five-point advantage over Perugia. So, you know, unless we have a major collapse, it looks like we will be making the playoff promotion playoffs. <laughs> it's a little redundant. Let's just get this episode started. We got a big one. We're going against our old team. We're going against Thomas Martinelli. We're going against Cunningham. We're going against Pisa. It's funny looking at their new roster and only seeing four players from last year that are still starting in Martinelli. In the midfield, you got Cunningham, center back Jovanovic, and then the goalkeeper in Kovalenko. Just the rest of them are just probably sitting on the bench, minding their own business. But that is kind of odd because I think the midfielder Jovanovic did score a brace against us. There's a nice little through ball here, though. You know, a chance for Bianco. Maybe a nice through ball here to Longo. He almost gets it, but it will be cleared away. Marin will head that to Salovic, a name that I've been pronouncing wrong for most of this save. There has not been a single shot yet, but there's one. Thankfully, it is saved by Martino. There's a shot by Martinelli, and that's going to go in. Their hometown hero gets the scoring started just 10 minutes before the end of the first half. Not what we wanted. They'll do it for the opening half. Not ideal. Martinelli getting the first goal and the only goal. Side of the tunnel, 1-0. I'll try to go for that sneaky through ball there, but they're, they're playing a tight line, which is going to be hard to break through. Ah, oh, took forever, but that's going to be a shot. Oh, well saved. We finally do get something. So we will get a corner now. I think we are going to switch the formation here. I think we'll take out Battaglia put on Strasser as he can play that right mid spot. We'll keep on Lombardi and we'll move him to a left mid. Salahovic puts it in. There's the header. Oh, well done Longo, but there's Kovalenko again. Maybe another header. Nope. It will fall to Corin though. Marin. Defenseman just shoots it straight to Kovalenko. Everyone gets readjusted. Through. Longo. Oh, it's offside. Just the timing has not been right this game. But we're going to run out of time. Not a good start to the episode as we drop points against our former team in Pisa. And of course, the goal had to be scored by none other than Thomas Martinelli. I will be quick simming two games this episode as there's four games remaining. We've already played one, so we will have three games on camera. And this one against Cosenza, that's a poor result. Colombo does get the goal, but... Venturi with the equalizer. So after dropping more points, we currently sit in sixth place. Russia with 50, we're with 53, and Bari have 49. So we're still sitting okay. It's just we can't continue this collapse. Second game of the episode, we take on Perugia. This is a crucial one. Again, as I noted earlier, Perugia are on the fringes of getting into that promotion playoff spot. So a three points could do us wonders here. It's already starting on the front foot. Casasola to Becerro. Oh, okay. No call there, but they're going to get the goal. I'm not panicking, but um, I'm getting a little worried. Let's just say that. Yep, as you can see there in the table, for some reason they have Perugia over us, even though they're in 10th. It's kind of a weird stat line to have. Oh, that's a nice little through ball. Tagawa. That's Casasola, centering ball through, tries to go near post. Thankfully, that does hit side netting. Now centering pass through to Colombo, who is going to lose it. And will most likely do it for the opening half. Yet again, another early goal given up. Still have an opportunity to get back into this one, but by how we've been playing, things look kind of bleak. The difficult part is just we're a team that's good at getting behind the defenses, but we're just not doing that because they've kept everything in front. Hasn't been any opportunities for us to slide the right through. Chance for a counter. Oh, they've working it well. Di Serio runs out of pace, but there's an opening. Thankfully, that is wide. Through ball here. Oh, well timed. 
Longo overruns it. Come on. Perfect opportunity here to make some subs. Take off Bianco, bring on Valentini, and I think we're going to have to go to the 3-5-2. We are getting a little desperate right now. He's going to take it to the corner just to kill some time because he can. Now our defense is wide open. Nice block, though, by Villa. He'll get in the way, but now he'll fall down. Oh, an interesting block there by Marin, but he just cannot keep the ball. Eventually, he will win it. This is probably going to be it. Ball is thrown up long, nowhere near Longo. He's not even going to win it. Time just drips down, and it looks like it will be another 1-0 result. Unless Perugia look to double that. They have an opportunity to do so, as they will. Near post, quarter, they get three points. They get three points closer to getting a playoff promotion spot. And we're in free fall. Dangerous times, there is no denying, as after 36 games, we sit just three points ahead of the ninth place Perugia. And now we are going to have to live sim a game. And it's going to be the game against Spall. It is a home fixture. So I'm hoping for the best here against the 13th place side. We have all of our starters in. And I feel like if we get this victory, we will be A-OK. -okay. And we do. Colombo gets a goal. Longo gets another goal. As that will most yeah, that will probably secure our spot in the playoff promotion. A little relieved, but you know, we should be doing a lot better than that. You know, the fact that we're in seventh and not in, you know, third or fourth is a little concerning. Good news is that we've signed a couple new players to the Youth Academy. One is Umberto Bianco, 62 overall. I'm going to switch him to a cam like every other player we get. Uh, we also have Danielle Gallo, 55 overall goalkeeper. Don't know if we'll use him, but, you know, there's there might be a future for him. And then also we have Diego Mancini. Having secured a spot in the promotion playoffs, we can get as high as sixth as we have our final game of the season against 19th place Frozenone, and we have all the starters in. I'm hoping that securing the spot, we can relax a little bit and get back to our winning ways because, again, that was just a dreary series of games. Nice little through ball here. Longo not going to keep possession, though, as he does apply pressure. And maybe an opportunity here. Early on is Longo. Nice heavy touch. Though he's going to run out of space. He'll run out of room. He'll take the curling effort and puts it in. Well done. Paolo Longo, who has had a great resurgence this season, especially after his ACL tear in the previous one, gets us on the board early. That is his 25th goal, 26 in all competitions. So again, that is just solid from him. It will be a tough go of it because there's a shot nice save there by Martino who honestly has been immense this season the reason why we've been so close in so many games is there's actually a nice shot and even better save by Martino um, okay pass to himself kind of works out in the end but too bad Bianco had it caught between his feet through ball here Corin finds Longo who fires and scores goal number two after those first two games I was getting a little worried but now I feel like with that win against Spall I think we're slowly rolling back to form we go nice challenge Lombardi though we'll stay with Frozenone final minute of the half there's a shot there's a goal they will have to deficit just before halftime I'll give them a little spark in their step as uh, I feel like if they're in 19th place, they're probably not going to get out of the relegation zone. But then again, they're not going to get relegated because FIFA doesn't go into the Serie C. Oh, it's a good play. Ball in the box, thankfully, is deflected off a defender. We'll stay with the team in blue and gold. Ricci slides that through. Clinton finds a pass, a nice block. Italia is going to lose it. There's a shot, another well-timed block. I mean, we're, the defense is doing everything they can right now. Offense needs to help out. That's a ball in the box. Free header, thankfully saved yet again by Enzo Martino. 
There's a shot, thankfully saved. <laughs> I keep saying thankfully, but still, Martino. If we can hold this result, he's the MVP. I don't care if Longo scored two goals, as yet again, another fingertip save by Martino. As they're pushing it in terms of time. Ball in the box again, headed away. Cleared up for Longo. We'll chest it down and that'll do it. So we end the season with a victory. What a gobsmackingly good performance by our goalkeeper, Enzo Martino. He has to be player of the game. What? How is he not player of the game? He killed it out there. Wait. And they give it to their right back? Yeah, the, the scoring system is just so stupid on this game sometimes. In the next episode, our quest for promotion will begin against Regina as Pisa take on Brescia. And we'll just see what happens. You know, if we lose here and then, well, that's the episode. But yeah, it'll be interesting how long next episode goes. I think what we'll do before we end, we'll take a look at the stats for the season, at least the regular season, as Paolo Longo had 27 goals, including in the Coppa Italia, 26 goals in the league, 18 assists, a great comeback season for him. Sergio Bianco, 16 goals, 8 assists. Valentini, 9 goals, 6 assists. Salahovic, 4 goals, 6 assists. Claudio Lombardi, 3 goals and 3 assists. Daniel Colombo, 3 goals, 2 assists. Marin Korn, 3 goals, 6 assists. Natalia, 2 goals, 3 assists. And even David McDonald, playing for Benevento, got himself a goal in the uh, little playing time that he got. Nilo Kanunin, well done. 1 goal, 3 assists in his minimum time. 